What I'm going to try to do today is make sense of all the news and information out there, coming from vendors, coming from the media, coming from the social networks, to make sense of it so you understand what is practical today and what is promise in the future. And my goal is going to be to take you from an unsettled state, if you will, of maybe doubts and concerns or even fears, to one of being comfortable with what's going on and therefore what I should do. So I'm going to conclude with my recommended action plan for each of you based on the content. Now this whole presentation is built on one assumption, that most of you in the audience are here with at least a kernel of doubt. The bollocks, as Jez, as Jez said. So is it true what I'm reading? Is it really possible? Or is it all just a pipe dream and a fantasy for the future? So I'm going to work very hard to position where we are so you can make your own mind up of am I behind, am I innovating, am I along with the early majority, what do I need to do? With this, I'm going to start with revealing statement, self-doubt. I live and breathe additive manufacturing and 3D printing. I have for some 20 years, but every day as I read the headlines, as I read the tweets, I have self-doubt. I hear a statement just last week, MakerBot 2 comes out and they've got a professional version of their replicator. It's for the professional market. Is that true? Is it not? Is it somewhere in between? Is it prosumer? I don't know. It requires investigation. Tomorrow you're going to hear an announcement of a from a company called Formlabs. They're also claiming a professional grade solution. Is that true? Forbes has headlines that we're going to have a new manufacturing revolution and it's going to happen very, very soon. Is that true? This information comes in and I have doubts. Are my opinions, the things that I'm operating on as fact, are they still true? And I state this, I open myself up to you only to show empathy. Because I live and breathe this eight hours a day, five days a week. You have real jobs. You can't commit eight hours a day to looking at this. I can only feel for you in trying to absorb all this information and decide what is fact, what is fiction, and what is in between. And I was reminded of all this as I traveled the Cornish coast. Are we up a little too high in the volume? Are we okay? Or I don't want to blow everyone away, but as I was traveling the Cornish coast, a good friend of mine, an industry expert, Graham Tromans, entertained my wife and I for five days down in Cornwall. As we drove along, the conversation, and Graham, by the way, is a recognized industry expert. As we traveled throughout Cornwall, the conversation invariably turned to business. And in that conversation, Graham revealed facts that I didn't know, that were important to know, and I hope that I revealed some to him that he didn't know either. But the one thing that happened, the one conclusion we had was that in every single story, there's always more to that story. There's more details. There's missing details. And we both commiserated with those that have made a purchasing decision based on a quick look-see and the promises of the vendor and a few casual conversations only to find that it may have been more expensive to run, required more effort, more labor to process parts, and it maybe took more to do the application. So the, the reason I'm telling you all this is we're now in a state of an overinflated hype, I believe, in the media with all these stories rushing forward, telling us of all these great things. And if you don't have the time to discern fact from fiction, it can be unsettling and cause you to believe that you may be behind when you may not be. So like the Cornish coast, you've got to look for those little coves and alcoves and the rocks hidden just under the water because those may represent new opportunities that you didn't recognize as you look down the far distance of the coast when you look at a cove, or it may represent a threat to you. And of course, the rocks in the way, unless you have charts to navigate, you may find yourselves in peril. And as you do that, you may be questioning, am I being left behind? Has this industry moved forward? Now, I want to open with, I've already opened, but I want to open with my positive view of additive manufacturing and 3D printing, because throughout this conversation, you may find points where I become a bit pessimistic. 
I want to let you know that I'm extremely enthusiastic about this industry. We have seen tremendous progress over the last couple of years, over the last couple of decades, and we've seen expansion in applications, expansions in systems and materials and software, and also expansion in the adoption of the technology. And what truly amazes me about this industry is the breadth. Let me ask you this, ponder this for a second. Can you name another technology that has so many different ways to achieve the end result? Additive manufacturing, you can laminate it, you can laser center it, you can melt it, you can use a binder, you can use extrusion. Are there any of the processes you know with so many ways to do it? And then we look at all the materials. In additive manufacturing, we're often looked down upon because we have inferior materials. But you name me one class of technology that can do thermoplastics, thermoplastic elastomers, thermoplastic uh, polyurethanes, ferrous metals, non-ferrous metals, glass, ceramic, sand, electrical links, and even biological materials. That is impressive, and that, is, that holds a lot of promise for us. And then you look at the applications from concept modeling to prototyping, functional prototyping, patterns, and of course, end-use production. For industries that range from medical to dental, to jewelry to art to special effects for movies, to design, to manufacturing, to architecture and construction. You combine all of that and this industry has a fantastic future, an extremely bright future. And it is going to progress, it's here to stay, amazing things will happen. But now let me back off of this rosy picture. Turn from optimist into pragmatist. Not so rosy. The first thing I want to tell you right now is Additive manufacturing and 3D printing are a very poor substitute for what already works well. It's an excellent alternative, but a poor substitute. And I know I'm mincing words here, I'm cutting that hair a little bit thin, but what I mean is if you're looking to directly replace a process to get it a little faster, a little cheaper, a little bit better, and that existing process already works satisfactorily, your odds of success and making the transition to additive manufacturing are diminished. Possible, but diminished. What I really believe, where I really believe the opportunity lies is when you start changing the game. When you make it an alternative that does something entirely different in the design, the manufacturing process, the materials, whatever. But stop looking at it as a direct substitute for injection molding or die casting or others. And as I've already pointed out, the missing details. I'm going to offer two examples. The more to the story. Out at Farnsboro uh, Air Show, Airbus demonstrated a beautiful video and made this proclamation that they will be printing aircraft, full wings, full fuselage, with, with fantastic materials never before seen, and with these architectures, these structures that can't possibly be manufactured any other way. And the media jumped on that story, but they only gave you the sound bite. And then it flew through Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook and all the blog posts and everybody's all Twitter. We're going to be printing aircraft and look how soon that's going to happen. What they failed to tell you in many of the media reports is Airbus's statement is by the year 2050, we will be printing aircraft. The media failed to tell you that in many cases. Also, the other thing they failed to tell you is there's not a single component additively manufactured on an Airbus commercial aircraft at this moment. Here's a company that's not even flying on anything, making a prediction, the world grabs onto it, and look how we're going to change, the revolution is here. It's a fantastic story and it's a bright future and it can happen, but not just as soon as we, as we think or are led to believe. Another story, Paranorman, a stop motion film. Got a lot of attention throughout the media because it's just, it's engaging, it's a fun story. So what they did is they 3D printed all the faces and took a snapshot and put another face on Paranorman and all the other characters to give the, the illusion of motion. Well, all of those faces, all those facial features were 3D printed. And it's a fantastic story and it flew through the internet like wildfire. What they failed to tell you is that when they first tried, it did not work. They had to work closely with the manufacturer of the technology and their application engineers to make the system work to their needs. They failed to tell you that. They give you the impression that, oh, we just walk up, as Jez indicated, print a few off and we've got faces. The other thing they failed to tell you, I only saw this in one news report. That company that made the movie did not save a single penny or a single hour in using 3D printing. The benefit was they were able to make a more feature-rich movie. So there's two sides to that missing detail. They weren't going after that for time and money. That's a negative hidden detail. They're going after it to have more latitude in their filmmaking prowess. So that's a long preamble, a long introduction. 
but I've really given you the key points of my message that I want to deliver today. And that's that this industry is progressing quite nicely. Maybe not with the breakthrough innovations that we'd hoped for over the last 20 some years, but it's progressing nicely, but just not as fast as we're led to believe. Also, the details are often missing. Always remember that point. So you want to inquire and ask questions. Poor substitute. Additive manufacturing is a poor substitute. It can be substituted, but it's always better if you use it as an alternative. But at the same time, lots of promise. There is a rainbow out there for us with a fantastic future. I just don't believe that rainbow is within grasping distance. It's miles and miles away.